Hi all it's easy here. I hope you all doing well. Today video is on the Emil Swedish tank. Thanks for watch like and sub all link to discord and patreon blow thanks again. Heavy tank project Emil, project number, 6400, known under the cover name of Kranwagen, Crane Wagon, or KRV for short, was a heavy tank developed secretly in Sweden during the early 1950s, Kranwagen, meaning mobile. Crane, was a cover name. 1. The intention was to replace the Swedish Army's disparate tank fleet with a tank that could counter the Soviet series heavy tanks and be upgraded continuously. The initial design, in 1950, proposed mounting a 10.5 cm autoloader in an oscillating turret. 2. Due to its size, weight and power to weight it was considered by many to be more of a medium tank than a heavy tank. The project was discontinued during development and only two chassis were built. They were later rebuilt and served as testing platforms for the artillery canon van 151 and Stritzvangen 103 projects. Project. At the end of World War II, it was clear that the mix of tanks in service in the Swedish armed forces was not just obsolete but also presented a large logistical problem. Kungliga Arm for Voltningen's Tigerdlning, KAFT, conducted a study that concluded that the most cost-effective alternative would be to chase the newly developed Centurion MK3, which while quite modern was judged to have upgrade potential for future requirements. A request of purchase was sent to the United Kingdom, but the reply was that no deliveries could be made before the needs of the British Army had been met first, which was expected to take between 5 and 15 years. For in 1951, the Vehicle Bureau of CAFT set about to develop an indigenous manufactured alternative, which they did in great secrecy under the guise of constructing a mobile crane. Parallel with this, negotiations were entered with France about buying the AMX-13 light tank. All this came to an abrupt halt when the British in early December 1952 offered to sell the desired centurions immediately in order to earn needed foreign currency. The Swedish Minister for Defence, Torsten Nielsen, ended the debate about the future tank purchase by, on his own initiative, signing a deal with the British at the beginning of 1953 with the first Centurion deliveries taking place in April 1953. The delegation in France was forced to depart under heavy apologies while the Emile project was terminated. A consortium of Landswerk, Bofors and Volvo suggested to revive it for the Fus Vars Beslut 1958, White Paper of Swedish Defence Policies 1958, where the replacement for the now aging centurions were to be decided upon. Emil was however regarded as too costly and instead the S-Tank proposal was put forward for the final draft which it won and it subsequently became the Stritzvangen 103. Construction. Testing of the German Panther and the French AMX-13 tanks in Sweden heavily influenced the initial 1951 design for the Emil project. The known documented statistics for the initial 1951 Emil were to be as follows. Turret, front, 180 mm at 45 dex horizontal equals 212 mm f cheek, front on, 125 mm at 35 degrees vertical equals 218 mm f cheek, side on, 125 mm at 80 degrees horizontal equals 127 mm f side, 30 mm rear, 30 mm hull, UFP-100 mm at 22 degrees horizontal equals 187 mm FLFP, 125 mm at 38 degrees horizontal equals 203 mm F side, 20 mm rear, 30 mm. Tengine, 550 horsepower weight, 25.6 T power to weight, 20.19 horsepower slash T gun depression slash elevation, minus 1415 on sides, plus 15. In 1952, the Emil project then progressed to be a counter for the Soviet IS-3 tank which influenced the shape of the hull while the oscillating turret was redesigned. The schematics for the three designs were split into four parts, frontal armor, side-slash-rear armor, engine and armament. For the first studies and trials a chassis which resembled a low IS-7 was built. 
3. There were multiple armor thicknesses for both the front and the side which caused a variation in projected weight between the Emil 1, Emil 2 and Emil 3. Turret configurations, Alt A. Turret, 140 mm at 44, 40 degrees equals 201 mm to 217 mm F hull dash UFP, 75 mm at 25 degrees equals 177 mm F LFP, 120 mm at 38 degrees equals 195 mm F Alt B. Turret, 170 mm at 44, 40 degrees equals 244 mm to 264 mm F hull UFP, 95 mm at 25 degrees equals 224 mm F LFP, 145 mm at 38 degrees equals 235 mm F side turret slash side hull slash rear configuration. 1, 40 slash 20 slash 32, 60 slash 30 slash 33, 80 slash 40 slash 40. Two main options were considered for armament. 120 mm caliber rifled gun L slash 40. 150 mm caliber smoothbore gun L slash 40. The ammunition feed regardless of gun was planned to be a dual drum autoloader allowing for quick selection of ordnance, armor piercing or high explosive. A new prototype ammunition was tested, which was to be a combination of heat and APDS. In case of failure, a backup armament was chosen, a 105mm caliber rifled gun L-67. Each design was to have a different engine. Emil 1, 6 Sileos 895, 500 horsepower Emil 2, 8 Sile V1195, 540 horsepower, or 8 Sile VS1195, 665 horsepower Emil 3, 12 Sile V1790, 810 horsepower During testing of the 12 Sile V1790 engine on the built Kranwagen hull it was discovered that after sending power to the cooling and other equipment the engine was only sending 723 horsepower to the drive wheel. There were a total of 6 variations per Emil plan for a total of 18 variations. Weight varied between 30.7 T for the Emil IA1 to 41.8 D for the Emil 3 B3. Ultimately the Emil 3 B3 was the preferred option. The turret side armor, 80 mm, and rear armor, 40 mm, was to be dropped to 70 mm at the side and 30 mm at the rear to improve gun stability as well as gun elevation.